Good morning. Good morning. In case you haven't met me before, my name is Sue Frost, and it's my joy to serve here as pastor of St. John's United Methodist Church here in Dover, New Hampshire. It's a joy because this congregation, all of you before me and those of you watching from home, together we are committed to being the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. And we only have to pick up a newspaper or watch the news in whatever form we get it to know that our work is not done. We're called with God's help to bring heaven on earth and we're not there yet. But it's encouraging, it gives me hope to see all of us gathered here today working together toward that aim. So it is truly a joy to be part of this congregation. 
If you are not officially part of this church, perhaps watching from home for the first time, please do consider St. John's to be your church home. We're, we're glad you're here with us. Today is a special day. It's our Youth Sunday, a day when we celebrate the children and youth who are in our midst. Sometimes during COVID, we can't see them as well as we used to. But we know that they too are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. And so today we've got a special treat. Our youth leader, Tish Joyner Sims, has heard God's call to give us a word this morning. And that's not always easy to hear God's call and to respond to it. Many of us here know that feeling exactly. And so how wonderful it is for all of us to be here together to support our sister and to listen for God's call in our lives as well as she tells us about her experiences and lifts up the work that our youth do as well in our midst. Also, this is a Sunday when we announce the recipients of uh, scholarships that we give out each year. So I'll be announcing that a little bit later in our service. Now, let us become more aware of God's presence here among us as we prepare our hearts to worship God. Good morning. Good morning. Will you all join me in the call to worship? You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. Let us stand and sing our first song, Awesome God. Scripture reading this morning is from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 17. 
So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Look, new things have come into being. This is the word of God for the people of God. I'm almost 40, but I still need the little step stool. It says something. (laughs) Today is Children's Sunday, something I'm very, very passionate about. Um, Working with children, this will be the end of my 10th year at Dover Middle School. 30 some odd years ago, if somebody asked me, you want to be a teacher when you grow up? And I would have answered, absolutely not. I'm done with school, done with it completely. But God works in ways that we don't necessarily plan on. So I'm going to speak about children. I'm going to speak about butterflies. Hopefully I'll keep it all organized together where um, I'll make some sense today. The Bible talks about childlike faith in Matthew. Jesus explains when somebody asks how to get into heaven that you must have childlike faith in order to enter. And as most of you know, children have a bunch of qualities that some of us would still like to have. They're very curious. They're also less hesitant than adults. Um, They tend to do things without thinking ahead of time, which sometimes is Not always the best, but, and if you've ever watched your kids play, they don't hold back. At least most of them don't. I was lucky to babysit my brother's um, children, Josh and Lydia, and took them to the park. And I was watching Josh, he's about, he's almost three now. I watched him play on the playground, and at the playground we were at, it had a climbing wall. And he took a couple steps up and then realized that wasn't for him, so he stepped down. But a a boy that was around his age didn't even hesitate. He jumped up on it, climbed as far as he could, and he fell. He fell hard. And his parents came to check on him. He was fine, jumped right back up, and went right back to the climbing wall. That sums it up right there, I think. Um, Childlike faith, to me, is the same way. No holding back, no hesitating, trusting that the adults around you, that God has your back, and that they're going to guide you to where you need to go. Our call to worship was lines um, that I chose from one of my favorite books, and it's Oh, the Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. To me, Dr. Seuss was way ahead of his time. His, his books are, are just classic. They span the ages. Um, and that one in particular, I think pretty much every graduate um, has received that. I know I did um, when I graduated high school. Because if you've, if you've read it, you know that it's chock full of analogies and symbolism about going out and exploring and finding out who you are. The sermon series we've been talking about, about being butterflies emerging from a cocoon, um, and I just want to say that this display is beautiful, and that's probably the biggest butterfly I've ever seen in my life, (laughs) thankfully. Um, But it's time to explore our environment. So the cocoon, to me, is our safety net. It's not unlike our home, um, our church community, where we form you know, form who we are and we, you know, get ready to explore our surroundings and our environment. For me, this church is my, is my cocoon. Um, it's my safety net, both when I was a child and even now as an adult, as a youth leader. My happiest and most fond memories are within this church of the youth group and the overnights we used to have the bells and the performance we used to play Wanaki, one of my favorite um, summer home away from homes Um, even the performances we used to do with Steve and Barb the one I will always remember is the roller coaster 
because for some odd reason you thought my brother should be cast as the big beefy jock guy and those who know my brother, um, I love him, but he's not a jock. Um, <laughs> but those are some of my favorite memories. I have pictures in my phone of, you know, of us as a group, as a family, singing to this church about God's love and how God works in our lives. But I left to explore. I left to explore my other environment, my environment that I didn't know so well. But I came back. Now, seeing that we're talking about butterflies, you guys are lucky. I work with a student who is a bona fide bug expert. So he has given me some butterfly facts. Some of you may know, some of you may not know. I know I didn't, I didn't know any of this. First one, butterflies eat with their feet. I don't know how it works, he just told me they eat with their feet. So I wouldn't suggest doing that though because that could get messy. But um, Number two, butterflies can see UV light that animals and humans cannot. Butterflies can also emit UV light through their wings. Their wings have these special little um, gaps um, that can help emit UV light. And plants and butterflies work together to with this UV light because the plants emit the UV light almost like a eat at Joe's type of sign that only butterflies can see. Now they only butterflies only live a few weeks, but I think that's where we differ from butterflies because we have eternity with Jesus. Um, another thing about butterflies, do you ever notice, have you ever watched, you can learn a lot from watching insects and, and animals alike, do you ever notice how butterflies never fly in a straight line? Right? They kind of zigzag, kind of like you're watching them, you're like, do you even know where you're going? <laughs> but they, they might not, they might, I don't know, but whatever route they take, they always end up where they need to be. They spread, after eating with their feet, they spread pollen, visiting flower to flower. Um, and just like their zigzag pattern, we might try to plan where we are going, but nine times out of 10, it doesn't work out the way it's, we plan it, right? Um, I'm gonna use my own personal experience. I went to culinary school. I don't know how many of you know this. And I planned on having my own restaurant. It was going to, I remember it. I did a whole dissertation on it. It was called, it was gonna be called the Monkey Bar. And it was a whole jungle theme. And I won't go into detail, but if you'd like to know the ins and outs of how I was decorating my bar and my restaurant, um, feel free to ask me because um, I remember every detail of it but that didn't work out for me and now I teach with children and I get to work with your children on the weekends and I met my wife and I'm the happiest I've ever been so I'm blessed that my flying route didn't work out the way I wanted it to. So we might not know where we're going. We might zigzag. We might fall. We might even go completely in the opposite direction that we're supposed to. But we always end up where God leads us to. Butterflies have their natural instincts. They know you know, using their special abilities of UV light and their natural instincts, they know where to go. Just like God gives us instincts and messages through our lives, through people, through jobs, through experience. And we might get burned, we might, you know, get in some dark times, but we always find our way. We might need to leave our safety net and we might 
need to leave our cocoon, but our home is always where we land our feet. And we need to try lifting off, and we need to try exploring our environment. And I say that to both the graduates, the youth, and to all the adults in a room too. Explore your environment, make mistakes, zigzag, but you'll always land on your feet. You'll always be able to come back home. And God will always show you the light and share the light with others. spirit of prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for the wonderful places, the safe places you provide to us in our lives, where we can feel your nurture through you and through others, where we can grow and become strong enough to dare to leave the cocoon, to crawl out on the branch, and even dare to lift off. You watch us, O oh God, as we zigzag, zigzag in our flight. We trust that your Holy Spirit blows us in the directions we need to go, that you enable us to go to new places, to land on our feet, secure in the knowledge of your love for us and the love of our church family. God, we give you thanks and ask that you continue to give us the courage to head off, to lift off, to go to the places where you call us to go. Lord, as part of your church family, we listen to each other and share in our joys and concerns. With our brother Corey, we continue to lift up the hope that his dad and brother will be able to give up smoking. And we pray that Trevor's custody hearing will go well this Monday. With Gail and Jim, we lift up Bev, who is in AFib and turn to you to provide healing and comfort and strength to her. With our sister Ruth, we lift up our joy that her granddaughter, whose name you know how to pronounce, and Lord, whose name you know I often mispronounce, Isla, Ayla, you know her, we know her, and we give you thanks that she graduated on yes yesterday from high school as Val Victorian. What a joy that is. And with our sister Brenda and others, we lift up the annual conference this past week went so well with a great spirit. We are so thankful, O oh God, for the prayers you sent with those of us who went. We felt them and celebrate the good work and the sense of joy that we felt this time at annual conference. <coughs> You bring so many wonderful things into our lives, O oh God, including this church where we can share together in the zigs and zags of life. So for all these things and more that we lift up to you, O oh God, we give you thanks as we pray together in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. together in affirming what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today is such a special day. Each year we designate a Sunday about this time of year to be our Children and Youth Sunday, a day to celebrate all the experiences that the younger people among us have had and the joy we feel because we have gotten to watch them expand their horizons and, and spread their wings and, and fly off to new places. And we also rejoice because they also come back to see us, so we get to hear about their experiences. Our church is truly blessed because there are people in it who especially wanted our youth to go and get a good education. Donna McAdam is usually here and would have been here today. I'm doing my best to step in for her. If Donna were here, though, we know, can you hear her speaking talking about Mr. and Mrs. Korn, who cared so much about children that they left money in their will to fund scholarships for the youth in our church, members of our church, that they might be able to continue their education with assistance from our church. And she would also tell us about the small family who also share in that love of education and the knowledge that a good education can help us so much as we fly off into the world with God helping us. And so they too have made funds available to support the youth in our church. So this year, our scholarship committee met and looked through the applications and selected three youth to receive scholarships this year. If those of you who are here, if you would just stand where you are when I give your name so that we may greet you with applause and know that this applause comes, it's our way of showing our love and encouragement for you. The first scholarship recipient is Emily Koshan, who has graduated from high school and is now making plans to attend higher education classes. Emily, you're at home, I think, so we give you our applause from here. Our next recipient is Abigail Value. Abigail is receiving the Jerry Small Scholarship and also a Corn Scholarship. And she attends the University of Hartford way over in Connecticut. And Lindsay Value is receiving a Corn Scholarship from our church, and she attends Curry College, also in Massachusetts. Not also, in Massachusetts, right? <laughs> we
We are so proud of you that you have finished high school and are continuing your education. And we know that God is with you on your journeys and will continue to give lift to your wings as you fly out. And we trust that you go out into the world, as all of us aim to do, to live lives that others will feel inspired to follow in your work with you. What a blessing it is to be able to give these scholarships to these young people and to see them flourish and continue the work that was begun in them at such an early age, thanks to the work of the Holy Spirit and this church community. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now I believe we have a special slideshow where we'll all get to see some of the things that the youth are doing.
truly we have so much to be thankful for and to be grateful for. And there are many ways that we can express that gratitude. Those of us here in the sanctuary, we can leave our offerings in the box at the back there. Those of you watching from home, you can go to our church website, stjohnsdover.org, and go to the Give page. Right there is a button in the middle that you can click to make your donations. An important part of our work as Christians is to provide financial support so that many of these programs that we have can continue to go forward and to be strong, powerful witnesses of God's love in this world. Annual conference, as I mentioned earlier, did happen this past week. We just got back yesterday. Jana Marie was there as a deaconess, as was Wanda. And uh, Jana, being the healing ministry person that she is, noticed that there were a whole bunch of these COVID self-test kits available for churches. So she grabbed a bunch of them, and we've left them on the table there. They expire at the end of this month. So anybody, anyone here, if you would like to take some home, please do. We're trying to keep each other safe in this world, and it's thanks to Jana that we have these available, and from our annual conference. Today, as you read in your newsletter that came out recently, today is Peace with Justice Sunday, a Sunday when we remember that God calls us to be peacemakers. We got to hear a wonderful witness at annual conference this past week from a, a man who went on a peacekeeping mission as a young person through our conference and the huge influence it had on his life. And so each, each year we take a special offering around this time of year. And so there's more information about that in your bulletins that you can read about. And if you feel compelled to respond, please leave your offerings again in the box in the back or online. 50% of the offering from this remains in New England to do peacekeeping work right here, <coughs> close to home. The other thing I want to let you know about, if you haven't heard already, is that we had a wonderful fair here on June 4th. Special thanks to our leaders, Brenda and Jane, for all their hard work in coordinating that and all the hard work that so many of us here did to make that happen. I'm told that we raised over $3,000. <coughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Let us join together in dedicating not only our financial gifts, but the hard work behind that, those gifts as we read our prayer of dedication together. Loving God, we give you thanks for the ways you guide us in our journeys of faith. May these offerings continue to sustain our community of faith that all may come to trust in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand now as we're able to sing our final hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Let me give the benediction. <laughs> Let us go forth now, filled with the Holy Spirit, sustained by it, and redeemed by Jesus, Son of God, giving thanks to our Creator who made us and sends us out into the world to reflect God's love. Let us go forth. Amen.